All right, joining me once again here on The Matthew Filipovich Show is my friend Bryce Covert. Bryce is a writer for The Nation magazine and the economic policy editor at Think Progress, all of which and more you can find at BryceCovert.com. You can also follow her on Twitter at Bryce Covert. Bryce, thank you so much for being on the show again. Thanks for having me back. All right, so Bryce, let's begin with the latest on the Flint, Michigan water crisis. Last week, the state of Michigan released a report from its investigation into the poisoning of Flint. What exactly did this investigation find? The investigation basically can be summed up as laying the blame for the crisis at the feet of the state government, um, you know, Snyder, uh, Michigan's governor and his administration. Um, you know, the, the water crisis came to light most prominently at the end of last year. Um, I think we've seen a lot of action happening this year, but I think now a lot of the focus is shifting toward trying to figure out exactly what happened and why um, in the hopes of preventing similar things from happening again. Uh, but it's it's been hard to untangle. I think a lot of the information that's come out has been um, disputed on different sides, um, conflicting. The state investigation, which released its report last week, is probably the clearest look at exactly what happened. Um, it lays the biggest blame with the State Department of Environmental Quality, the, um, an agency meant to protect drinking water and other prevent people from other environmental hazards. The report was just scathing. It basically said it completely botched um, applying the rule, the federal rule that's supposed to protect people from lead in their drinking water. It waited too long to accept help from the EPA. It failed to do its own investigation. Um, but it also, the report also found that there was blame to be shared by the state's emergency manager um, system. If listeners aren't familiar, in Michigan, if there's a city that's in financial distress, you know, Detroit, Flint is another one. Um, it, the state has this ability to appoint an emergency manager to run the city, not a democratically elected person, just appointed by the governor. Um, so Detroit's had that. Flint has been under emergency managers for a long time. It was while the water crisis was beginning to happen. That also is part of why the investigation found that the whole thing was poorly handled. Um, and because all these people report to Governor Schneider and the state government, basically it said, look, the buck stops there. There was failures sort of all around, but that's where the, the blame really lies. One thing that, that stood out to me, and it just was just sort of infuriating, um, when they were talking about the, the state environmental group, uh, was that they, th I think the term was, they misinterpreted the EPA's lead and copper rule. How does one misinterpret that? I, it, it, it seems like there's sort of science involved, right? It's sort of like, it's not like, oh, I misinterpreted the meeting of uh, Inception. You know, I didn't know what, the, what it really meant. Like, it's not like a movie here. We're talking, we're, what, are they, what is their actual justification for saying they, they misinterpreted it? Well, I will say that everyone has pointed out, and I think it is true, that the, the lead and copper rule, which is the rule that the, in, the EPA promulgated in the 90s, again, meant to protect people from lead poisoning in their water systems, it's a pretty um, loophole-ridden rule. Hmm. Um, it's just, it was supposed to sort of have more force and be tighter, and then it got loosened and weakened as it was being created. And the way it stands, from what I understand from many experts, um, it just does not require the right kind of testing, rigorous enough testing. It doesn't require it often enough. Um, action doesn't necessarily have to be taken at the right levels. You know, we now know, and the CDC has confirmed, there is no safe level of lead that you can ingest, particularly if you're a young child or a pregnant woman. Um, it, the CDC uses five micrograms per deciliter as sort of its rule of thumb for what something needs to happen or above. That is a very small amount of lead. Um, so we don't, science says we should not tolerate much lead in our water or in our blood system. The lead and copper rule doesn't quite use those thresholds. So, you know, you can, ha you can find elevated rates of lead in water and still not have to do anything about it. Um, that said, you know, it, the report did say that there are things in the lead and copper rule that the 
MDEQ misinterpreted. It should have applied it more rigorously. It also holds the EPA to account. The EPA, it says, could have intervened far earlier than it did. Basically, it finds that although this rule, uh, for lack of a better word, is pretty crappy, uh, (laughs) it could have been used to do more earlier and prevent the scope of the problem that that we eventually saw. You also recently reported on a new batch of emails uh, to the related to the Flint water crisis. What exactly did this new batch actually find? Uh, sorry, the batch of emails? Yeah, the new batch of emails. Yeah, so, so the other interesting thing, uh, just as some background to this new email situation, first of all, um, Governor Snyder and his administration is not FOIAable, so the press can't go and demand... Um, documents and emails and things like that. Why, why uh, is that but, exactly? Why, why are they, is that just the state law that they just said, ah, you, you don't, what, what, what is, what's the reasoning behind that? Well, it's a state law. I don't quite know what the reasoning is. I guess some of it has to do with, you know, um, I don't know, the government <laughs> being able to operate with, with fewer hindrances. It's, it's a pretty, um, it's a, it's a big Lack of transparency. For, for it, lack of a better word, is it a is it a crappy rule here? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, but so so now we're having the situation where emails are sort of slowly dripping out. Snyder has promised to release batches of them, and he is, although they don't go back as far as some activists would like. Um, his other people can be FOIA'd who were working with him, so we're starting to get those. But it's all just to say that we've had this sort of slow trickle of emails coming out. Um, and we sort of lo- lo- learn new things every time they do. The most recent batch um, confirmed that uh, Michigan officials and EPA officials were aware that residents were getting rashes from the water as early as May 2014, which is just a month after the city started using the Flint River as its new water source, which was basically the catalyst for this whole crisis. Um, those rashes weren't officially investigated into, until February of this year, so about two years later. Um, and this just comes on top of other things we've seen in emails where it was clear that, for example, officials knew about a Legionnaire's outbreak in early 2015, and that still hasn't even been investigated yet. Um, there are emails that show that top aides to Governor Snyder were aware that there were issues with the drinking water as early as October 2014. They talked about switching it back to Detroit water, which is the higher quality water source they were using before. That switch didn't happen until much later. Um, Snyder has maintained over and over again that while he was aware of some issues in the drinking water, that it was they were limited to certain things. They weren't related to lead poisoning, for example, um, and that all this other talk that his officials were having with each other, he was not looped in on. Um, Again, because he's in control of what emails get released, there has not been anything in the emails he has released to, to say otherwise. Um, but it is very clear that, if nothing else, the state and federal government were aware that there were problems with the drinking water um, basically as soon as the city started drinking water from the Flint River. Yeah, and they didn't do anything for for many many years. Yeah, it's it's another thing that's about that you found, and this is something that's been reported in some of the earlier batches of emails. Is sort of the dismissive and even sometimes like insultingly jokey tone that some of these officials do, use to like describe people who are complaining about rashes showing up on their skin. Um, so talk a little bit about about just sort of the level of disrespect that some of these officials actually uh, showed in their emails. Yeah, well, and this sort of, I just kept thinking of the role people say, write that email as if it will be foia because yeah. the things you say in an email really can come back to haunt you, particularly if you're a government official. And um, a horrible human so being. Recent, <laughs> yeah, the, this most recent batch um, shows them just sort of taking a light tone. One of them says, um, I'm off to physical therapy, perhaps mental therapy with all these flint calls, LOL. Um, you know, this is in September 2014 as people are reporting rashes and horrible odors and coloration of their water. Someone else um, uses like a huge string of smiley faces about the fact that someone allowed the residents to drink Flint River water. Um, in, a, in a previous batch of emails, you can see Snyder's aide um, talking about a request from 
Flint's mayor at the time to get more help around the water as a cover your ass move because he was up for re-election. Um, there's just sort of this tone of derision and dismissal that you see in a lot of these emails that I think plays into one of the things that's really outraged residents is that, you know, it took so long for their complaints to be taken seriously. They were written off so many times. And in a in a city that's um, majority black, most many people live in poor in poverty. It's a, they have a forty percent more than forty percent poverty rate. It's hard not to see that dismissal and that tone as related to the fact that this these residents were just seen as sort of disposable. The things that were happening um, were well known and yet weren't being taken seriously and action wasn't taken.